Welcome to another episode of the Nuclear Medicine Molecular Medicine Podcast, the longest running medical podcast in the world. And today we're in Brisbane uh, for the Australian New Zealand Society of Nuclear Medicine meeting. Um, it's nice to be back in person and to get another podcast out. I haven't done one for a little while. And uh, we've got Ken Richard Bell, who's going to talk to me about something that's got nothing to do with imaging, really. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> right? But everything to do with nuclear medicine. And it's, and it's one of the oldest concepts that's been done in, in nuclear medicine, but one of uh, the longest overdue. Uh, new is much. It's new. It's all new. new. It's all yeah, new. But, it's, all new. but yeah. I think it's, it's a concept that's been talked about for a long time, but it, but, but it makes perfect sense. Um, so we're going to talk about... Um, uh, one of the more, most common cancers that there is. In the world. Mm. In the world. And that's skin cancers. Um, um, and uh, it's a skin cancer that's very, very common. Um, in fact, um, I, my surf lifesaving patrol, virtually all of us have had some sort of skin cancer at yes. one stage or another. Um, all, almost all of them. My, my, uh, my, um, uh, my father died of, uh, of skin cancer, non-melanoma skin cancer. Right. Right. So it's a really... Uh, common and it's uh, becoming more prevalent and yeah. it's becoming more prevalent and um, so tell me a bit about what uh, what you can do uh, in that nuclear medicine space right. well it's not imaging now is it no it's not imaging but it is usually it's using beta particles so just a little bit of the marketplace so non melanoma skin cancer in Australia there's around about it, just under a million procedures to of Medicare procedures to remove a non melanoma skin cancer a year and that there's so there's around about four hundred. So how many did you say? Just under a million. A million a year. A year. Well, the population of Australia is only twenty five million. That's one in every twenty five people. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Wow. So, but you've got to assume that, but that could be one or two treatments per person. Sure. So, and and so it comes out. But the the thing is that non melanoma skin cancer is the biggest cancer in the world. Yes. In Australia, we are super big. Yes. In that, Queensland's the worst. Right. So Queensland is bigger and better than that. So, so th but it's well, one of the things that we need to do is we've got to address it because specifically with people who are uh, immunologically challenged, yes. squamous cell carcinoma becomes life-threatening. Yes. So where these are, the basal cell and squamous cell are seen as a slow-growing kind of cancer, they're now, now being seen more for what they actually are. And some of them are quite more life-threatening. So the more we know about them, the more we need to, need to realise we need to remove them. Right, my, my father was immunosuppressed. Correct, and and he's exactly the ones that we need to be looking after. Right. So the treatment we're now using is localized. Yes. It's using it's using rhenium one eighty eight. Yes. To treat a localized cancer. So if you've got a if you've got a basal cell on the back of your wrist, yes. on the back of your finger, oh, it's a wrist. Um, you and that's a very common place for it. Yes. Actually. Yes. You put a little bit of plastic on to protect the skin. Yes. We put a paste or a paint. Full of rhenium one eighty eight. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. On on the paste. Yes. On the on the lesion. We leave it there. It'd be about forty five minutes an hour. Yep. We then take it off. Yep. And that's the treatment. So what we're doing is we're using we're using rhenium, uh, which is the beta emitter. So we, we've got to use that to to what to three millimeters, and that kills the cancer to three millimeters. Right. So it's one treatment. It's painless. And then after we've after we've killed the cancer, it then will take about three months to then necrose, yes. heal, yeah. and have no scar at all. Wow. So, so a bit, it can do a little bit of pigment change of right, the skin. Of the right, skin. right. So, I mean, the existing standard of care is liquid nitrogen, right? Is well, there's a whole plethora. There's actually quite a few here. You've got, you've, you go from the extent of surgery, so you've got Mohs surgery, yes. you've got plastic surgery, You've got, so you've got all the surgical options. Right, and people often end up quite disfigured from that, right? They can, especially when you're looking at the face. A lot of the BCCs, so if you think BCCs up, SCCs down. Yes. A lot of BCCs are on the nose, on the forehead, on the ear, in the crook of yeah. the ear. And the, a lot of those are surgical options, and there are quite a lot of them people don't want to do that because they're getting scars and they're getting no. all that. So specifically people who are more aesthetically inclined. So this is where we win hands down because we can get our foil into the crooks of the ear and get the and actually get the ear uh, treated in a, in, a, in a way that no one else can do it. Where if there's surgery, you quite often you've got to take you've got to take a do a, a so some sort of flap surgery, which is ingenious, but it still leaves scars. Right. So, so the, the the ability of the surgeons is brilliant. 
However, they still leave scars and, and that sort of thing. So this how, is the next one. How efficacious is it compared to the... Um, well, let's take uh, the you know liquid nitrogen or something. Like okay, that. liquid the liquid nitrogen, which is cryotherapy, that usually has it, it's, it's the doc, the studies are showing now it's got a recurrence rate of about twenty percent. Oh, so it's fairly significant. So it's quite so the, so the so the, the they cryo off quite quickly and and as I heard our professor Sid Baxley say this morning, there's a lot of uh, a lot of treatment fatigue with these patients. Sure, they keep coming back and they've had enough. Right. The nice thing about uh, the studies we've shown now, now we've got around about, so far we're, we're new and emerging, but we've treated about 4,000 patients around the world so far. Okay. So, so we're, we're new. It's a significant number. Yeah. And we've got a success rate of about 98%. Right. So that's that's better than the yeah. therapy rate. And the recurrence rate of about 1.5%. Okay. So, so not many come back and we've got a fairly high success. And this is on one treatment. Right. So and when you're considering face... So where we really fit, there's a segment of the market where there's a lot of room in the marketplace for all the options. We're looking at the segment of the market where, which is where the low-hanging fruit is, is really the face and the hard-to-get-to spaces, and we're still just one treatment. Where radiation therapy is about six or even 15 fractions right. to do something like that. So it's a fraction is back and forth to the to the, right. to the, to the radiation. And because it's beta therapy, it's intense therapy, but it's, it's not going to expose... Therapy to other t- tissues. Totally, so, totally. So, so it's so, very short, three milliliters. Right, and and it, rhenium is an analog of technetium. Everybody in nuclear mm. medicine will know it's technetium. Yeah, same area, same area, same area. Same area and it can be produced by a generator too. That's right. It? So you, we get it. So we so uh, Oncobeta makes tungsten generators, which is we bring over here, and it's a looted and brings out the genera- It brings out the uh, rhenium. We have now have a manufacturing site set up at Anstow, and that that makes our carpool. The carpool is, is basically the syringe which holds the paint where we paint onto the patient. Right. So that's made here in Sydney, so we can supply to Australia, and also we're, we're looking at other countries. Right. So what's the half life? Seventeen hours. Seventeen hours. So seventeen hours means that it's really got no long term radiation storage issue, um, and it's long enough for it to be transported away from the site to be used. Exactly right, yeah. So I treat it a little bit like FDG. My background's with, with the FDD. Right, but it's got a longer half-life. Than it's it. longer half-life, but it's still just in time. Yes. And and so and because you've got to leave it on the on the patient for a bit of time, with FDG, you get into the patient, you put in 250 meg or 200 meg of FDG into the patient, and that's done over the next 45 minutes. We need this to sit on a patient for about an hour or so. So, so there's a little bit longer need. So the 17 hours is kind of needed, but a little bit longer. Gotcha. But I, but I find if you treat it like, if you specifically talking to people around, if you treat it like a short acting, then everybody realises that okay, everything happens that needs to happen now. Right. And and that's kind of, that's more of an attitude. Right. So, are there any special uh, equipment precautions that you need? For a new kilometers inside, because you've got a tech yeah. beta, right? So yeah. you want it. You want to get a. You want to have a, a a survey meter, you know, for the contamination issues. That's been yeah. Reduced. So so the, the the treatment is done at the moment. We've got a clinical study going right now, and yeah. that's and so so that's happening in three sites around Australia. And there's a blend of radiation oncology and nuclear medicine working together in those sites, which is unusual right. because we've got two two specialties working together. In, in the, each site, each of these sites has what we call a base unit, which is basically a mobile hot lab, which is there to protect the, 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 the users, not the patients, because the patients are in a different situation, to protect the users from any radiation, because you're getting gigs, of, you're getting gigs in, the, in the transport oh, unit. Yes. So, what we're doing, so what we're doing is, um, is that we're, uh, we've got it all protected so that, so that when they're moving back and forth, so as a base unit with a, with a dissimetry unit, and you need those because the symmetry in it is what you need to measure how much is going on each patient. So there's there's a, there's a, right. there's, a there's a methodology and process, uh, and, and and so you need a special type of dose calibrator to measure because need, it's beakers, right? Basically, yeah, you do. So you're putting so many megs on a patient. So if you're if you're starting with two gigs, for example, and you're putting 400 meg on a patient, you measure two gigs. You go back, you put your 400 on. Uh, then you come back and you measure to see that you've got 400 on. When you've got 400 on, you then go to the next patient, and you, you can do quite a few patients from. So each carpool uh, will do about four or five patients. So this loops into a into a an ob- and then you then yeah. So from the manufacturing side comes a carpool, which is which is our, our our syringe. It will cover 25 square centimeters of lesion. Right. And and because you're putting it on plastic, so you're never you're actually never touching the skin. And this is a device, so it's not a radiopharma, it's a device, it's a sealed source. 
and this this will then you can use this on a number of different patients ah, for the one carpool. Ah, right, yeah. So the one carpool will do four, five, even six patients, depending on how big. Right. The so you've got it. You've got it. You you've you've got a basically a sealed source. You put it on the hot thing. You will leave it. And you take it off again. So there's no real contamination issues or anything. Like Generally, that. yeah. Unless someone touches it and, and well, once the paint dries, it's unlikely to do. Right. So the the critical period is when the paint's drying. It's like drying paint or yeah. watching dry paint. Once, you, once the paint's dry, it's unlikely to move around, but the rhenium still is working. Right. And so, and that, and you live, usually the time's about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on the depth of the lesion, is what you leave on the patient. So the patient, so from the patient's, the patient's experience side is they have this bit of plastic put on them, quite often on their face and funny different spots, depending on where it is. Then you put the paint on, which may, may be a little bit cool because of the room temperature. They have it sitting there for an hour. It then is taken off. It's disposed of, and that's all the patient feels. It's amazing. It's painless. Right. So, so, this, so you need a nuclear medicine technologist to. to it's to helpful medicine. to have that. Yeah, you need. So there's a there's a whole heap of licenses that people have to have, which sure. the Radox and the NucMed guys have. the The good thing about the NucMed techs is that they know how to work with radiation. Sure. So they they are. This is their ducks for water. This they're fantastic. So the NucMed tests we've got working on the study we're doing now, they they get them working the machine. And I get the doctors doing the painting. So right. it's, it's because it's very similar to a technician elution, um, and, and well, the techs actually don't t don't do any eluting at all. It's all done for. Oh, we okay. do that in the manufacturing. Right. Side. So they get the carpool, and it's all about getting that carpool onto the patient safely. Right. And and so this is ideal for really a skin clinic, right? That's that's kind of where you're going to use it. Yeah. So the difference thing is here, skin clinics, and that sort of thing are key. So so the when you if you're talking nuclear medicine or, or radiation oncology. Excuse me. Radiation oncology have got a, have got a, a good relationship with dermatology. Yes. But nuke medicine outside melanoma have no relationship with, with gotcha. dermatology gotcha. at all. So there's there's a link we need. There's a whole level of referral we need to build. Right. So 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 the work with Radox and nuke med together is actually quite a nice little starting point. So that we can then, as a, as a company, we'll go and talk to the dermatology and radiation oncology to to build the, the referral pathways. Once those referral pathways are built, the marketplace, as you know, as, as you know, it's huge. So we just need to be able to then drive that into these. these yeah, it's a huge market. I it's mean, I'm, huge. I'm liable to have it myself. I mean, I've had things cut off and things, various bits and pieces. I mean, I, I think you know, I'd, I think I'd rather have that done than uh, yeah, than, yeah. Uh, than have uh, you know uh, have scarring and so on bits and pieces. So. Yeah, that makes complete sense mm. in terms of that. So we're, we're going through the process of going through Medicare uh, approval, yeah. uh, and that's a whole process that we're working through now, and we're, we're several steps into that process. So we're hopeful that we'll have Medicare by the end of next year. This is Medicare Australia. W mm. What's happening overseas with your product? Uh, in Germany, it's currently being, well, that's our parent company, it's currently, uh, it's currently funded uh, over in Germany, and it's currently used. So we've got studies going over there, and it's, it's used. So this is new around the world. So, so how many are in Germany? How many studies do you know in Germany? Oh well, we've uh, we've there's been a number of studies done in Italy and Germany and Europe already. So that's where our four thousand patients are coming from. Right. Plus we've got our, we've got sites in England, uh, Austria. Um, and we've got a new one starting in South Africa, we've got, and we've got a site. Oh, well, South Africa's got real problems with that as well. Too. But the US has got to be a big market. So surely. we're we're. As a company, we're looking into the US as well. It's tough to get into the US market because of regulatory things. We've had that with the other Australian company Correct. who tried to bring in technic gas. It took 40 years to get to the I know, drugs. I know. They used to be next door when I was a pet net. They were my next door neighbour. Right. Yeah. So, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, so we're, we're, we're investigating the pathways right now. So we're, we're looking at, we're talking to different companies who we can work with to potentially uh, work with them. Well, maybe you want to aim it as a medical device rather than a... It is a medical device. It's well, not there you a, go. Exactly. So, so one of, one of the confusion points here, which which we have, everybody seems to think we're a radio farmer. We're not. We are a device. We're a seal source device. Full stop. End of conversation. That changes the whole. Well, makes the regulation easy. Surely it makes it easier. So, but when we're talking to a lot of the a lot of our uh, our CROs and people doing the work with this, they're so used to working with radio pharma like FDG and that sort of thing. So it's it's kind of almost it must be a radio farmer. It isn't. It is a seal source device. Right, but I'm but I'm I'm thinking you know this is this is a no-brainer. I mean I think lots of places, particularly you've got a new clinic that's already used to doing therapy and other bits and pieces. 
you'd do with your local skin clinic and you'd set this up, wouldn't you? I mean, oh, absolutely. It's, it, it, it fits beautifully with Theranostics. Yes. Because Theranostics, so anywhere where they're doing treating. So Theranostics, you're doing lutetium and all that. Well, everywhere's doing treating. There's got to be nowhere in Australia that hasn't got a skin clinic nearby. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So, but we need to set it up right. So you're absolutely right. So I'm trying to sort of go, because we're, we're getting a lot of interest and, we, and a lot of people are saying, oh, we want to do it. There is a little bit of barrier to entry because we've got to get the base unit, we've got to protect people, we've got to do all the right things. You've got to get all the right radiation licenses. But exactly. most techs, I mean, like myself, we've got we've got a therapy license, we've got a, we've got a diagnostic license, I've got a research actually, license. It's actually not the techs, it's 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 the facilities and getting so the licensing is we have got to make sure they're right. Right. Got but to, it's gotta be on their management license and correct. all that sort of stuff. That's right. That's right, right. but it's easy enough to get it on your management license. It is, it's just an application. It's actually really simple. Yeah, particularly for a sealed source. Yeah, yeah. And, but, and we're new. So everybody's interest course is new, but then it's a matter of we've got to get the base unit and we've got to get, we've got to, it's, it's the development of the referral pathways so that we've got reasonable business. So from a business perspective, you need to be able to get your you get your patients about six, six to eight in a session and then that makes it viable, financially viable. Because mm -hmm. we're, not, we're, not, we're not cheap. So because of the way the car pills are, are made, um, you, you're better off getting it so you're using about two, to, two at least two couples to make it financially viable and you're charging the patients in that space. Right. So that makes it viable. So, we, so we've really got to make sure that we've got enough patients flowing so that we get a regular flow of business. So I'd much rather work with a smaller number of facilities, people who are willing to, to be out there and do, so work with a smaller number of facilities so we can develop up a really good uh, momentum and good credibility because credibility at the moment is critical yeah because and we we've got another year and a half before medicare comes along yeah so if we could build up the credibility in addition to the study and and, and there is a market of patients out there who've had so many of opportunities where they've had so many cryos yeah, and this yeah. area, that they're going oh if i can just do one thing to pay this and we get it done and leave it there fantastic which is kind of the, a little bit of that market that we're looking to um where I'm trying to stem the enthusiasm a little bit so that we can set it up right. I right. want to make sure we set it up. We don't, we're not a fly-by-night unit. Right. We've, we've invested in, in a, in a um, manufacturing site in Sydney. Okay. Uh, we're investing in our, we're, uh, we're talking, quite a lot of money's gone on investment in the, in the, in the uh, manufacturing. We've put uh, about $5 million of, of, of dollars into this clinical study we're doing. Yeah. So we're investing in Australia and we're investing in the marketplace because we want to do it right. We want to set it sure. up right so that we're getting... But on the other hand, it's pretty simple. And and as far as clinical trials go, five million has to be the world's cheapest clinical trial. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, my wife works for the CRO and she goes, anything below $11 million, we don't even look at. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so you're absolutely right. But it's a lot of money for us. It's a lot of money for us. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah, so in a few years time, th what we're saying now will be, will be oh, that was when we were small. And we're in an emerging marketplace. So, sure. but skin cancer in Australia is something we need to deal with, and this is another way of treating those yeah. patients in such a way that's not disfiguring, uh, and it's easy, and, it, and it's simple. But there's a lot of guidelines you've got to do to make sure that the simplicity is not negated. All right. So, um, yeah, no, that sounds great. So, so who, who 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 do people contact if they want to know more, if they want to get involved? Obviously, me. Yes. Obviously. Uh, and I'm Ken Ricard Bell, and I'm sort of. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and that yeah. sort of thing. Are there any papers and presentations that, we've, that you could point people? To? We we do. So at the study at the at the at the conference here, we've got a number of clinical studies, and we've got uh, we've got, uh, we got numbers of clinical studies which have been from overseas and the previous studies. We've got a bit of information about the Epic Skin study we're doing in Sydney, in Australia now. Yes. Plus, we've got a lot of information about so sort of how the whole. So it's been published in in uh, yes. which journal? Uh, a lot of them in, uh, in uh, oh, I've had it in front of me, I'll tell you, one's, one's in uh, European Derm, another one's in European Nuclear Medicine. Right. Uh, so so because this crosses over several different yeah, specialties, yeah. Um, they've gone into different journals. Right. So, but we've got a number of different, different ones. So, so it's a matter of asking, we've got a whole plethora of them. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for taking part in the podcast. My pleasure.